G'day, I'm Ash, and before we get into the meat and potatoes of this video, do you know, I'm looking at getting a decal. I look something like this, but my affiliate link's up, so if you want 3% discount, go ahead and check that out in the description down below. Yeah, I'm gonna have to promote the living shit out of that, it gives me money. And, uh, yeah, this patch, <laughs> this patch is certainly, I've seen what you guys have bought so far, there's been about 300 transactions, and I've only had the affiliate link for about a week now. Yeah, you guys spend a lot of money on, on War Thunder, let me just say that much. Regardless, Update Danger Zone is quite the interesting patch. It provides the first of, of the fourth generation jets, particularly the F-14, and it's the only one in this current update. I wish they'd do sequential updates where they'd introduce similar aircraft and similar vehicles at the same time. So if they're introducing a new mechanic, they'd do stuff like, for example, the Harriers, but again, in New Power's defense, everyone was flying Harriers and there was SRAMs everywhere. It was just a horrible patch, despite the engine being upgraded and so on and so forth. But we've had our usual element of bugs, despite the dev server being open longer than, I think, in rememberable history, for at least for me. I think it was last time it was open for two weeks was probably back in 2017. Besides the point, there were so many bugs that they ironed out on the dev server, it was crazy. The amount of change logs and, and, and sort of things that went on behind the scenes there was incredible. To keep up with the data miners and, and keep up with the things that were going on was just a bit crazy and a bit much. And now we have the patch released and there are still more and more and more bugs. I don't think I've seen a more buggy game in my life. But for some reason, it's still functional. I guess that's probably why we still play this piece of shit sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it gets a bit that way sometimes. Anyhow, this update brings good and bad. While it is teams of F-14s versus F-14s, I've noticed the, uh, the MiG-23s are doing quite okay against the F-14s. Seems like people haven't quite got the hang of the AIM-54s yet, and while they are not necessarily performing too well in the current meta, you know, watching a competent pilot fly an F-14 is a scary thing. I've encountered it a couple of times. Good luck playing anything else at 11.3, 11.7, and, 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 and so on and so forth, because really, you're getting in, in, in matches where it's just USA versus USA the whole entire time. HMS Hood is missing about half a weight. She also sinks quite easily. Lol. Anyway, where's the Bismarck when you need her? Um, and then there's a Kronstadt, which is completely overpowered with semi-armor piercing, completely paper battleship from the from the likes of the fact that it was never completed. It was only completed as, so far as a hull. Um, ships, it just feels weird. I, I don't know. I've been playing it a little more, been enjoying it over the last couple of updates. I've sort of started to play it a lot more recently to the point where I probably should become a naval content creator at this rate, but eh, it's beside the point. My heart is still with aviation. It's just aviation is super, super compressed. With the two new 9.0 premiums, it doesn't really feel that good. The British uh, Lightning is okay. Uh, it, its armament is, well, good, but you're not really going to use it in a close air support environment. You get whacked by everything, especially in ground forces, if you're going to play at that kind of BR. Other than that, Reality is often what it doesn't seem. The Ariete is good, maneuverable, it, it has, you know, decent gun. There is no countermeasures for it, and it just really struggles in some aspects, although it is blatantly overpowered at the same time. It's a bit of a weird one. Then it's just a bunch of other premium little, little aircraft. And after, well, receiving a bunch of feedback from my Discord server regarding well, what they thought of the update, a lot of them were just casual players who were disappointed there wasn't anything at lower tiers that really satisfied their need to grind out some of the higher tier vehicles. Which could be a bit of an issue, but hey, it's the, the first week in and people are already you know, just saying it's a lackluster patch, despite the fact that there was a huge amount of change notes. It's kind of a weird one. It feels like nothing's changed, and it feels like the same game, but there's just new shiny shit on top, and I guess that's just the evolution of this game continually having to add content or else the game will perpetually die i just you know there is no real quality of life update that you can really just do on a, a large scale because obviously that would generate less interest overall and as a content creator there wasn't really much that i really wanted to cover this time around it was kind of a bit disappointing for me I mean, the, the new French F-1 CT is fantastic with its little missiles, but it's just a Mirage F-1. There isn't really much else to write home about, aside from the uh, ground attack version of this particular aircraft. So, hence I'm including his background footage right about now. The little Lancia RO is a World War I truck. That's really the only sort of low-tier vehicle that I'm really interested in. 
Even some of the higher tier stuff like the Australian Abrams for a squadron reward vehicle doesn't really interest me. And the patch, at least at top tier, feels a little bit empty with it just being F-14s versus F-14s. It reminds me of when the MiGs were first into play. And occasionally you will find yourself fighting F-14s like this. Oh my god, what a poor lad here. I will get him eventually, it's just a matter of turning this bus around. The F-1 is a bit of a fat bastard at times. And yeah, this patch is okay, but it's not great either. The addition of the napalm bombs makes no sense, but again, I suppose they're using it as a form of weaponry you can equip to a vehicle. So have fun unlocking modules that you probably wouldn't even use. And I just certainly hope that there is more bug fixes down the way, because that'll at least make the user experience a little bit better, even though I don't know what the fuck to cover as a content creator now that the update has actually released, because it feels like there's nothing in this fucking update at all, despite there also being a lot at the same time. It's a very strange middle of the year patch. And I certainly hope that as we end towards November, you know, things get a little bit better when it comes to the 10 year anniversary of War Thunder's official sale, or birthday, so to speak. Anyway, if you want to buy anything or save 3% off, there is an affiliate link down below. It helps out the channel greatly. I really, really appreciate it. And my name is Ash. Thank you much to the Patreons and everybody else. Uh, I will see you in a video soon. Bye bye. Oh, and what do you think of Update Danger Zone? Is it any good? Let me know in the comments down below.